Talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder is underwritten by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, a licensed representative of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa, cindyschulte.com, and Fred Haas. Over 30 years helping injured Iowans recover losses from accidents and work-related injuries. Fred Double D, Haas Double A. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're so glad you you take time out of your day to be with us because we love being with you. Hopefully, they're taking time out, Jules. Yeah, <laughs> not just not just tuning in because they just heard uh, Therese Tamio. She's great. She's great to listen to, huh? Oh, so you're saying so? Hopefully, they're intentionally listening to well, us. Hopefully, they're good friends of ours, Julie. And they're listening to us every Thursday morning. Isn't that what we're talking about today? Yeah. <laughs> Friendship. Friendship. Yeah, friendship. friendship. We have some great guests, two ladies that have um, been doing some wonderful work with this, Michelle Fanley and Emily Jaminet. They have written a new book called The Friendship Project. And, I mean, women, this is just our topic, isn't it? This is this is us. You it know? is. And, you and, know, it's, it's kind of about how do we help each other become saints, right? You're right. Right. And this book is uh, where they've talked about saints who are friends. So I think this is really going to be an interesting, fascinating topic and hear what they're about their new book. Yeah, it'll be fun. And it's going to be a great segue right into next month. Yes, and it's in August. We have we have declared at Catholic Women Now that not that the world really cares, but we have <laughs> declared that it's Friendship Month. So we uh, have some great um, th- things that our friends have shared with us. We sent out texts to all our friends, and you guys, you guys rock. You came back with some great, beautiful things about what friendships have meant to you, friends over the years that have helped you out, and we're going to share those right. over how, the next how month. How they really helped each other on their journeys. You know, yeah. I always kind of think of it as you kind of pull each other along. One gets ahead, the other pulls it. You kind of catch up and then you walk together I, a little bit. And I like that image. I, th- I like it in the fact that you reach back behind and you help somebody yes. and, you, and you walk with them and they're taking your hand yes. or you're taking somebody else's hand yes. ahead of you and you're mm-hmm. you're walking. Mm-hmm. You're walking. And, you know, and, and we've, all, we've all had those friends in our lives that have come into our lives when we needed. Some have remained in our lives as friends and some have come and gone. Mm-hmm. But God always takes care of us through each other. Mm-hmm. He yeah. uses that so yes. hey let's start in prayer let's do that in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen you know i kind of as i was praying the hail mary right there i just feel her come to be that good friend of ours who's oh. always pulling us up to heaven that's right <laughs> yeah i just love that. Well, thank you to Cindy Schulte Farm Bureau Services for underwriting Catholic Women Now. Cindy is an authorized independent agent, and she can provide health insurance options from Wellmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa, and she just is always there to make insurance simple for you or for me or, or whoever needs it out there. Um, Cindy is committed to helping prepare for your future and help protect what matters most. She can really help us through all stages of life. If you want to find Cindy, she is on the web at cindyschulte.com, easy to remember, or 515 226 to one one one. All right, so we are ready to join with our guests, Michelle Fanley and Emily Geminet. They are mothers and both contributors to the website CatholicMom.com, and they've co-authored another book, Divine Mercy for Moms. And we've had Michelle on our show talking about that book, great book. Uh, they've both been involved in leadership for the Cap Columbus Catholic Women's Conference. Both earned degrees from Franciscan University of Steubenville. They have a lot of commonality they here. They do, and they join us today to visit about their latest book entitled The Friendship Project. Welcome, Michelle and Emily. Thank you so much for having us. Well, it's Good morning. Just, well, it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. So we got to know, what inspired you two to write a book about friendship? Well, when Emily and I would go speaking about our first book, Divine Mercy for Moms, we had so many women come up and comment to us on our friendship, and they said that was the favorite part of our talk. And many of them said, you know, I don't have good friends anymore. I left friendship behind years ago when I got married or, Mm -hmm. you know, when I became an adult. I was just too busy for friendship. But Emily and I have seen how beautiful, faith-filled friendships can really help us work in our journey as Christian women. Mm -hmm. 
You know, and I, I, I would say, I'm, I'm kind of thinking, you two sound a little bit like Julie and I. I know Julie has kind of helped pull me along at different times in life, you know. She came along with this radio gig, you know, right about the time that I needed a friend to help me kind of figure out, what do you want me to do with my life, God? So I, I understand what you, what you ladies are talking about. <laughs> Well, we found that when you have a good friend or great spiritual friends, you it's a lot easier to be a virtuous person. So the book really breaks things down in a very easy and relatable way, where all of a sudden, with the combination of these awesome saint pairs, we have friends who were you know, saints who were friends on earth, and we found that they were inspiring each other to be saints. And the combination of virtues and easy stories about our friendships... It, it's inspiring. You want to you want to be a better person. So, I, you, know, you know, when I, you were talking about um, this whole concept about the saints having friends, I sometimes when I read a story about a saint, I get this tunnel vision and thinking about, oh, they're just doing this by themselves. Look at all they did. And I tend to think, oh, then I, I should be able to do this with God. And But I never thought about, oh, yeah, they had friends and well, I helped them along the way. I don't know why I didn't think mm-hmm. that. But I think that's a really good point to make to women. It's a really a gift to us to see that. I know we included actually all four women doctors of the church, and right, those are the, you know, not only are they saints, they're doctors of the church, and they all had these beautiful friendships. My personal favorite story in the book was of St. Teresa of Avila and Blessed Anne of St. Bartholomew, and this little sister in her order was considered her inseparable companion. So she was her nurse, she was her secretary, and she was with St. Teresa of Avila everywhere she went, and St. Teresa of Avila even died in her arms. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, wow. That is really a friendship right there. Mm-hmm. To accompany them. You know, and there, is so, uh, there are so many different saints that were friends. And, I, you know, it's funny because Julie and I were at an event last night um, for Catholic Radio. And I was looking around and I thought, there are so many people in this room who I think are living, walking saints. And many of them friends. You know, it, it's, I think it's, it's interesting how we kind of, I shouldn't say we, they kind of pool together. <laughs> Well, we are seeing that here in Columbus, Ohio, how the Catholic community, when we come together and we, our friendships are based on our spiritual friendship, our love for our, our Catholic faith, we can accomplish so many great things. So in the book, we give a lot of deepening and developing suggestions how to go about making these friendships so you're not intimidated and overwhelmed by the idea of, I need to have these type of friendships. It's very easy. It's something such as attend a women's conference, mm-hmm. start you know a retreat group. Group and you know, find a retreat and go and retreat with your friends, or begin a face sharing group. And that's why the Friendship Project is more than just a book; it is actually a study. And Michelle and I put together videos, professional videos, that will be free to download, so you can get a group of girls together, you know, and read the book and have the, this video series to accompany you through the process. I have to say, this it's it's not you know. Friendships, it sounds so simple, but, you know, we're, we're, you really do have to be intentional about, about forming your friendships and keeping in touch with friends. Especially these days. Yes. Especially these days. I agree. Um, so, it's so easy with social media to, you know, really spend an hour on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and not actually have a real connection with the real live person. But the more we are intentional with our friends, and we love how you just said you're doing a friendship month. Emily and I celebrate every Friday as Friendship Friday, and we take Friday. Fridays is the opportunity to be intentional about our mm. friendships. Connect with a friend that maybe you've lost contact with. Reach out. Say, hey, can we get some coffee? Can we get together? And it's really been a gift. Over the past year, we have reconnected and deepened and developed so many friendships in our life. Make one of those old-fashioned things called a long-distance phone call, right? Yes. Pick up the phone instead of just sending a fast text message. Well, this is just something that women throughout all ages have needed. I mean, I remember my mom had coffee clatches back in the day. So it's kind of like a, a modern day of get, to get together with your girlfriends and have coffee like my, my mom used to do. They used to do it regularly. And I, th- I think it's so beautiful you're bringing this back. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of ever ancient, ever new kind of thing. Mm-hmm. What's been most surprising is that as we've launched this book, which comes out in September 22nd, but we've actually piloted it with a whole group of women in Columbus, Ohio, and everyone said, I want my daughters to read this book. I want to read this book with my daughter. I want to read this book with my mother. You know, I want my college girl to experience this type of friendship because no matter how old you are, it's never too late to deepen and develop your friendships. And what we also have found that this is our first opportunity to evangelize is through 
our relationships. It is great to give somebody a pamphlet or a book or encourage them to turn on Catholic Radio. We love those types of tools of evangelization. But our friendships were given to us by God, and He wants us to deepen and develop them into this type of spiritual friendship. Well, we're listening to Emily Jaminette and Michelle Fanley talk to us about their friendship project. And, okay, one, I want to know how the book has strengthened your friendship, because you guys have been friends for a while. How's writing this book strengthened your friendship? Well, it's been, oh, we've been having the time of our life as we've been doing this because now we get to travel together. We were just in Chicago last week at the Catholic Marketing Network trade show. We've been speaking all over the country. So we get to have all these amazing girl trips together. And (laughs) it's also been great because Emily and I are, you know, one of the biggest things to do is we pray together. And that's something we talk about in the book because I think that can be an uncomfortable thing in your friendships to pray with your friends out loud. But every time we get together, we, we are praying together, praying for our friends friends, praying over each other, and that has been a really gift to us to, to strengthen our friendship and to be together joined in prayer. What, how, what's the first step if people are uncomfortable praying with their friends? What's the first step in doing that for um, a couple friends? Well, what we would call it is possibly the holy five minutes, right? It does, you don't have to start with the rosary. Start with just saying, how can I pray for you? What is on your heart? You know, what are your prayer intentions? So in the study that we put together that goes with the Friendship Project, we always encourage the women to pray their prayer intentions out loud because you might not know that somebody's mother's um, fighting cancer, and, you know, you might find out through that prayer intention or that somebody's daughter is going through a deep depression, and you don't know how you might be a little tiny instrument or seed in bringing some type of relief to that person. So prayer intentions are really an important way to begin building these friendships. And the second part, you know, as you mentioned, our friendship is being a friend of virtue. You know, when you come to start practicing these virtues and developing virtue in your friendship, you realize that loyalty is really important. Being a person of hope, being a person of faith, being a person of change. Charity. You know, we go through these virtues and we tell people that it's not just about being spiritual, but it's also about being reliable and being virtuous. Mm. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I appreciate the friends in my life who model virtue. Um, it gives me something to to use in my life. And I look what they do and I think, oh, you know what? That's so encouraging to me. And I appreciate that. And I just pray that, you know, God is working that in, in me as well. And it always reminds me of something like, you know, the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit, you never know who is leading who when you know, we're in these friendships with God. Yeah. And you know Christ. what? You know what I like about this is not only is it about friends who can help build up in us because you know we do need those virtuous friends around us to help us pull us to heaven and help us become saints but by them helping us we hopefully can turn like julie said and and grab another person who maybe needs the example of virtue so as we grow in virtue we become virtuous examples to other people who may need it as well and and, you know people who you know and and we all we we shouldn't say well i'm ahead of that person on the journey or you know we we don't want to talk like that because we get ahead and behind of each other all the time but we really really then can become that for other people who maybe are less exposed to virtuous people. Absolutely. And I love what St. Francis de Sales, right? He says, friends are for our growth and health, happiness, and holiness on mm. this earth in order to better prepare us to share together in the gift of eternal life in heaven. So the mm. whole point of our friendships, right, is to bring everybody to heaven through these beautiful friendships. Mm. And we will, that these friendships will be eternal and that that is a gift and a blessing to us. And it goes back to what you said earlier about this is a great entry point for evangelization for women. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And mm. I love the idea that, you know, you mentioned that it's it's healthy. Actually, it's healthy f- for our bodies here on earth to have healthy friendships that um, bless us. Well, we, we put together on our website, we put a whole website actually just for this book, and it's called thefriendshipprojectbook.com. And what we did is we went and interviewed real people, our real friends, on some of the virtues that they uh, have expressed and witnessed to us, you know. So it's not just about, you know, sometimes when you start talking about friendship, people feel guilty, right? They feel like, well, maybe I wasn't a very good friend or this person wasn't a good friend. And that's one reason why we call it the Friendship Project. It's 
because everything, there's an opportunity for growth every single day. And every day is a new day. And God can take friendships that have possibly been broken in the past and restore them because he's a God of restoration. And he might, you know, and for some of us, we don't need just restored friendships, but we need to develop these friendships. We might have been relocated to a brand new city in Iowa, and we don't have those type of relationships. So we also have really great practical ideas tucked right in the book. So you're not only going to be inspired, but you're going to get some great ideas on how to go about doing this. Oh, I think that's so great. Those practical ideas are so, so valuable. Uh, What a great, great book. I can't wait for it to come out. And what's coming out again in what, September is that right? November 22nd. Yes. Okay. okay. Good. All right. Well, thank you so much, Michelle and Emily, for joining us today on Catholic Women Now. And we'll be looking forward to your book, The Friendship Project. And your website is? Book Friendshipprojectbook.com. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you. Well, keep Thanks, up. Thanks, guys, for being with us. Keep up that good work for us. Jesus. God bless. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You're listening to Chris Magruder and Julie Nelson on Catholic Women Now. We're broadcast live from the Mercy Live Up studio on Iowa Catholic Radio, 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM. And we stream live at iowacatholicradio.com, so you can find us anywhere in the world. And you can also find us on Facebook. And matter of fact, Julie and I would love it if you would text us your comments, especially if you have any comments about how friends have helped you um, along the way to, you know, hopefully on your journey to sainthood. So text your comments comments to 515-223-1150 and you may hear us talk about your text we'll keep you anonymous if you need to be um you may hear us talking about your text especially this upcoming month which we are calling friendship month <laughs> that's right <laughs> oh well julie those emily and michelle are i love the example that they're setting for all women in, in their friendships and you know let's you and i talk a little bit about friendships and how we can lead each other to sainthood okay i know yeah. you have done that for me so many well, you times. Know, I think it works both ways. It yeah. works, I mean, Jesus works, God works for all of us in different ways. Yes, and you, like you said earlier, and often you say you never know who's leading right. you. Right, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So so we start with um, kind of the idea, I think, and they, they hit it a little bit, is, you know, we're physical beings. God came down in, as Jesus and and uh, so that we could touch him and make it easier and more relatable to be a friend of his. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think... To me, that's, um, and you had mentioned that earlier to me. And I thought, you know, isn't that interesting? Because I'm a very tangible person. I like the hands-on stuff. So for me to know that God came down to save us and, and took on the form of a human, to me that, what better friend, right? And and they say, you know, a friend that will die for you. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we... Um we mentioned earlier in the top of the show that we sent out some queries to friends mm-hmm. and asked them for, we uh, posed the question about what um, in their life would they have friends come into their life at different times to help them out in time of need or in time of, you know, transition. And, and you guys rocked it. Girlfriends, you <laughs> rocked it. We heard some, we had so many great things that we are going to continue on with this theme for the month of August, but we want to share a few today kind of in line with some of the things Chris and I have talked about, about friendships and how, you know, I love the fact that, you know, different friends do come into our lives at different mm-hmm. times. And um, I know that some of my friends have come, have come into my life. Some have stayed in my life, mm-hmm. but due to moves and some kind of lost touch. But um, God always put somebody there. He always yeah. put somebody there. To, I had to a help. friend say years ago, um, friends are like angels who come into our lives just when they need, just when we need them and for the amount of time that we need them. Sometimes they're there briefly and sometimes they're there for a lifetime. Right. So, And yeah. I found, too, with my friendship circles, I... You know, I have friends for different things. Like, you know, if I'm not, if thing, I'm grousing about my husband, um, <clears throat> which I hardly do, you know. <laughs> um, you know, I have friends I'll turn, certain friends I'll turn to because I want my friend not to, I don't want the friend that says, oh, that slacker of a husband, why do you, why, why you put up with that? No, I want someone who challenges me to live virtue mm-hmm. in my marriage. Like mm-hmm. Emily and, and um, Michelle talked about it, virtue and mm-hmm. to challenge me and show me maybe where I am wrong and where my faults are. And, and, um, um, point out what I can do differently and to be better and to rise above you know, my I was, pettiness. I was actually looking for some different quotes, and, and I found one. I was surprised, honestly, that Aristotle actually said, a friend is someone who loves your soul, quote, loves your soul. And I thought, well, good for Aristotle. Wow. You know, I, yeah. I guess, you know, the thing is, is that's really what it comes down to. 
if you really want the best for somebody, you love their soul. And right. I know, Julie, you often have said, you know, we really need to look at people as souls. And that changes your whole perspective, you know. So everybody really becomes your friend when you look at it that way. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, it's Christ and everybody. Mm-hmm. It's Christ and everybody. Yeah. But uh, look, I, I want to share some of these great texts that we got from our friends. And um, the beautiful the beautiful wisdom of all of you It's just... I just have to say that, you know, Chris and I do this every week, but you know, we get so much from our listeners. Mm-hmm. It's you who really enrich our lives. And thank you. And, thank you know, you it, it's so there, funny. So. I, I was so surprised. I mean, I thought we'd get a few texts, but I got like 12. Well, this is, I think <laughs> this just shows how we as women need this. And, yeah. like, you know, we're, yeah. we need to have these yeah. friendships. And we're created, as Kelly Walkwa said, yeah. created to relate uh-huh. to each other. Yes. So, well, I had one from a friend that said, she, um, she says, I believe God sends us specific people to walk with us when we are going through difficult t- times. And every valley experience in my life, God has sent me someone I needed. This has been a reoccurring theme mm-hmm. with people, and mm-hmm. I think that's beautiful. But sometimes these people become lifelong friends. And other times I recognize them as people who pass through, helping me on the way to serving Christ and others. Mm. Yeah, I, you know what? I got a text from a lady who um, was preparing to battle breast cancer. And as she was, you know, she, her husband, you know, was taking the reins of the family and he was continuing to work and trying to stay strong and positive for her. And a friend of his actually said to him, reminded him that fear is the opposite of faith. And just that one line gave her husband the strength to carry out through the toughest of times. And it not only, of course, did it impact him, but it impacted the whole family and it impacted her. And she just said, you know, it was a wonderful gift. That one line. You never yeah, know. What, you never know. You never know what one comment can do to build somebody up. Or one small act of kindness mm-hmm. will do for somebody. Mm-hmm. I remember one time we were living in Indianapolis and uh, there was a new mom in my Bible study and she lived on the way on my way to Kmart and I called her and I said, Hey, I'm going to Kmart. Do you need anything? Oh yeah, I need diapers. So I, you know, I was going to Kmart for diapers anyway. It yes. was no big deal to me. So I stopped and got her diapers and you would thought I gave her a thousand dollars. Well, it was the she thought was, that, it was just the thought that counted. But she it. was feeling so overwhelmed mm-hmm. and she just couldn't even get out to go get diapers. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, you know, those nudges, we mm-hmm. need to work, you know, yeah. acknowledge those little nudges yeah. to, to help somebody I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah, I just need to yeah. call her. Well, speaking of overwhelmed, I had another friend talk about how she was out to lunch one time and and she just kind of mentioned how she was doing a house move by herself because her husband was extraordinarily oh, busy with those, work. Oh, what a hard And thing. she's sitting there with her three friends, and they said, let's go to your house. And so those three friends ended up spending three hours, pretty much helped her finish the move. And I thought... Wow, she's right. got great friends. But she said in that moment, they were the angels that I needed. And it just sounds like a practical little thing, but they dropped everything to go spend an afternoon and help her move. I know. You know, we may not think it's that big a deal or we might have these set these huge goals and ideals, but it's the little things mm-hmm. with love. It's those little things with love. Well, yes. As St. Charles of Lisieux said, little yeah. things with great yeah, And love. our vocation is love. Mm-hmm. It's to love. Yeah. Um, you know, talking about the lady whose husband was her best friend, that was a reoccurring theme and several of these they talked about their husband, and I, that was so inspiring for me to see marriages mm-hmm. come together and be so strong, yeah. and to consider your husband to be your best friend. Your best friend, yes. I thought, next to Christ. Next to Christ, next of course. Christ. Yes, <laughs> Christ is in the marriage. I had another friend who um, brought out the fact that the visitation. And we've talked about that on with sh- Mary and Elizabeth, yeah, Mary and Elizabeth and their friendship. And we've talked about that on the show. And that's kind of been like the the one we often think about, and mm-hmm. the first one we think about mm-hmm. um, with the book, the Friendship Project. Mm-hmm. They brought out the friend, the the saints that had friends along the way. So I think it's going to be neat to broaden that out. Yep. But um, that is kind of where we go to a lot of times when we think about Christ centered friendships. It Mary is. And it is simple. It is simple. I, I did have one friend talk about how somebody invited her to a Bible study, and it not only changed that invitation that was kind of the springboard to her love for scripture and her love for God. The invite. The invite. There you the go. The invite. And yes. uh, I think that's part of this friendship project, too. It's just a simple thing as an invitation. I mean, I think of Kelly Walquist. She got invited to a Bible study. Now look what it did for her. I mean, oh she's doing great things for God. Yes. You she know, has so you never know. What women, to, she, um, Kelly Walquist, Julie and I have had her on a few times. She um, is the lady who started Women in the New Evangelization right. up in the cities, in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis. Yeah, reaching so. out to women and yes. bringing us together mm-hmm. because... Um, 
we hear you. We, it's it's a it's a it's something we need for our soul and, and renews us. Anytime I'm with friends of faith, I just walk away, and we may not be necessarily doing a Bible study, but I just walk away feeling a little more elevated. My spirits up. It's mm-hmm. it's and sometimes when I'm finding myself, I've been needing to get out of the house i'll call a friend and go for coffee and it's just like wow or those friends who gently call you out yeah you know and kind of wake you up and you go oh and later you go oh thank goodness thank goodness they did that oh yeah and i have some friends i i I don't i mean i know they'll tell me the truth Mm -hmm. and and i appreciate that Mm -hmm. i've come to appreciate it i've come to appreciate it (laughs) in other words we've become more humble yes and we (laughs) embrace it and we see the the value in it yeah we see the value in in our lives so yeah Yeah. Uh, and charity, the yeah, truth and charity. Yeah. Well, you know, we just had a great conversation where this, you know, kind of wrap things up about the takeaway mm-hmm. from this whole project. I think for me is when um, Emily and Michelle talked about the virtue aspect of our friendships. Mm-hmm. You know, you have friends that you go and do things and common activities, but it's those friends that model virtue mm-hmm. that really, really kind of deepen your yourself you mm-hmm. grow mm-hmm. make you um a, a create a make you a better person mm-hmm. it's just babe. so yeah. what's your takeaway i think you know mine is just the idea that you never know where you're at on the journey and it can be one thing that you say in love that will help somebody else um uh-huh. and then and people have done that for me as well so it's it, you know you you never know like you said who's helping who that's right that's mm-hmm. right well we are wrapping the show up and we want to thank fred haas law offices for their support of catholic women now mr haas is an experienced iowa attorney with 35 years of legal expertise. He takes the time to show personal care and compassion for his clients and really, really brings in uh, that personal side of in, in his practice. Uh, potential clients receive a free consultation. He's located in Des Moines, but he assists, Mr. Haas is assisting people throughout Iowa. 515-256-6301, fredhaas.com, Fred Haas, double D, HaasAA.com. Okay, well, that's wrapping up the show. Will you close us in prayer, Julie? Sure will. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you most importantly for your friendship. Help us to deepen and grow in those people you put in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, the Iowa Catholic Rosary is up next, and thank you so much for listening. We would ask that you please consider to make a tax-deductible donation to Iowa Catholic Radio as we continue to teach, evangelize, and defend the Catholic faith. And we ask that all of you, friends, go do impossible things with God. Talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder is underwritten by Fred Haas. Over 30 years helping injured Iowans recover losses from accidents and work-related injuries. Fred Double D, Haas Double A. And Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, a licensed representative of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa. CindySchulte.com. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder every Thursday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. On the radio voice for Catholic Women Now. 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM, and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app, Iowa Catholic Radio.